What if your customers are trying to find your business online, but instead of finding you, they find your competitors? Now, more than ever, it's time to make sure you have the right SEO to make your business stand out online. Welcome to Go Mind Your Business with Terry Bork. Presented by Extreme Marketing Concepts, putting your business in front of the hungry herd of buyers who are looking for you right now. Extreme Marketing Concepts, helping you drive more traffic, dominate the market, and crush your competition. And now, here's Terry. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Go Mind Your Business. My name is Terry Borg of Extreme Marketing Concepts, and today I have an outstanding guest for you. I have John Papa George of Alpha Environmental. Welcome to our show today, John. Thank you. Yeah, it's so great to have you. Um, let me tell you a little bit about Alpha Environmental before we get started for our audience. Um, Alpha Environmental is Tampa Bay's premier mold testing and inspection source. They are a Florida licensed mold assessor. They are board certified and can bring you technical expertise for determining the source of the mold and provide solutions for mold remediation to permanently eliminate your mold problems. So you'll be able to breathe easier. Um, if you have mold or indoor air quality issues in your home or you might have a concern, you can give John over at Alpha Environmental a call at 813-514-6653. They are, uh, again, certified indoor environmental consultants and they are prepared to answer any of your questions or any concerns that you might have uh, about issues that might affect your home. And they're proud to service um, Tampa Bay, uh, P Pinellas County, Pasco County, Hernando, Polk, and Manatee Counties. So, John, again, welcome to our show today. Thank you. Yeah, it's great to have you. So how does one get involved in the mold remediation business? Well, you know, the, <clears throat> the mold remediation business is, uh, is kind of an old thing, but it's not really that old. Um, mold has been around since uh, the days of Moses. Uh, but also, uh, in today's uh, uh, homes, we, mold really wasn't a problem 50, 60 years ago uh, as it is today. Uh, today we have most homes are air conditioned, they're closed up. Um, how long has it been since you've had your windows open and letting your house uh, breathe that way? Probably not very long. Uh, or probably been a long time since that's happened. But anyway, uh, we keep our homes closed up, uh, and mold has become a real problem, a real issue uh, for people, uh, particularly within the last 40, 50 years. So um, mold is an old issue, but it's really kind of a new issue, too. I got that. Okay. So tell us a little bit about yourself, John, and um, so we can understand a little bit more about you. Well, um, I uh, came here to the Tampa Bay area uh, in the uh, late 60s, believe it or not, mm -hmm. um, in the U.S. Air Force, and uh, I got out of the Air Force here, um, and uh, when I first got out, I went into refrigeration and air conditioning, and I did that for quite a few years, and that kind of kept me in the uh, the construction related trades, mm -hmm. uh, and then I spent uh, 20 years uh, in the restoration construction industry where um, it was my job to estimate and supervise the jobs uh, where homes had homes and offices had had fires and water damage and uh, then mold problems so uh, it's kind of a, a, a natural progression then in 2005 I realized that there was a coming need for uh, good mold assessors and uh, that's when I decided to uh, leave that industry, uh, the restoration industry, and join the uh, inspection or assessment industry. And that's when I started uh, Alpha Environmental. Okay, I got it. Now, I I'm always curious, should anyone who inspects for mold be licensed? Well, you know, um, the uh, Florida legislature was, uh, uh, was presented with that problem um, quite a few years ago. And um, we uh, actually, I work with my uh, state legislator at the time, 
and we passed the, the legislature passed a law in 2006 but uh, Governor uh, Bush at the time um, vetoed it because there were some problems with the uh, insurance end of it then in 2007 um, it was passed and signed but they gave it until 2010 in 2011 after they got all the little glitches out of the bill uh, they went ahead and put it into effect in July of 2011. So anybody who assesses mold today uh, must have uh, a state license. Okay, I got it. How about the person who actually cleans up the mold? Should they be licensed? Well, actually, uh, that's a good question. Um, those people also need to be licensed just like we do. Anybody that cleans up more than 10 contiguous square feet of uh, mold for hire uh, must be licensed. In other words, you could do it for your home, uh, but you can't put an ad in the newspaper, I clean up mold, because okay. uh, then you must have a, a license. Uh, and that's uh, that also went into effect the same time as the uh, mold assessment. Now the, the um, neat part about this law, there's quite a few states that have put in a good solid mold uh, remediation and mold assessment law, but Florida is the only law or the only state that put in a law where both sides of the industry needed to be licensed. And as part of that bill, they made it to where the same person cannot assess mold and remediate mold on um, the, the same property within a year. So in other words, I can't come in there and tell you, Carrie, you've got a bunch of mold in your house because I just assessed it. I'm going to charge you X number of dollars to do that. Now, because of what I've seen and what I'm going to recommend, you're going to need to do X number of dollars worth of cleanup. And then when we're done with that, I'm going to come in and test it to make sure that it's okay the law says that you can't do both sides of it. You can't assess and remediate. Okay, great. So so your your primary function then is on the assessment side. That's exactly right. Okay, and then do you refer the remediator or do you give a choice on remediators to use or is that up to the insurance that's company? The, How that, does that kind well, of work? Well, that's up to the, uh, to, up to the homeowner. Okay. Uh, we do have uh, quite a few good, solid uh, remediation companies that we work with and we'd be more than happy to to give them a few names and they can interview uh, the purpose of what we do is we give them a a good solid report and with that report they can give that to two or three remediators the remediators can look at it and they should be able to get estimates from all the remediation companies that are similar rather than each of them having their own opinion as to what needs to be done okay got it Okay, so now, what is it that you do when you inspect for mold? That's a good question, thanks. Um, we start out with uh, a sit down with the occupants. We want to make sure that we understand what we're doing there. Uh, we don't come in with a uh, certain uh, uh, concept of what needs to happen. Um, we go in and we want to see what the people's problems are. Uh, have they seen things uh, going on in their home? Uh, has there been water damage? Uh, are people being negatively affected by that? Uh, those are the types of questions that we want to ask them. Then after we do that, we kind of do a complete walkthrough of the home. We want to look at the walls, the ceilings, the floors, um, and particularly the air conditioner. Um, I like to say that the air conditioner uh, and the duct system is the lungs of their building. Um, whatever uh, is in their home um, is going to get go through that air conditioning system at one time or another. Just like whatever air is in this room, I'm going to if I sit in here long enough, I'm going to breathe every little particle of air and dust and dirt and whatever else is in here. So it's kind of the same thing with the air conditioning system. The air conditioning system tells us a lot about what's going on in the house. Uh, we, and when we're doing the walkthrough, we're kind of looking for stains. We're look, we're using our meters. We're looking for uh, moisture. We'd like to test the temperature, the relative humidity, things of that nature, so that uh, we can get a picture of what's going on in that house while we're walking through it. Uh, 
Then after that, we kind of put a theory together as to what we think is going on. And from that theory, then we decide where we're going to take our samples. Typically, we do a minimum of two indoor samples and one outdoor. And a lot of people say, well, what do I care what's in the outdoor air? Well, we want to know what's in the outdoor air because whatever is in the outdoor air is what we expect to find in the indoor air. Um, and if there's something showing up inside that's not in the outside or in much larger quantities inside than it is outside, then we know that there's a problem that we need to go hunt for a little bit better. Then after we get done with the inspection, we send those samples off to the laboratory. The laboratory sends us back a very specific report that most people don't have any idea what it <laughs> means. We go through it with a fine tooth comb. We analyze it and we look to see what's going on and we try to come up with some hypotheses as to what's happening. Then we write a complete report. What we've seen, photographs, statistics, or uh, temperatures, humidities, uh, all of that kind of stuff. And then we give our recommendations as to what needs to be done, not just to cure the mold problem today, but to keep that mold problem from coming back. Too many times we go into people's homes and they say, you know, we spent $10,000 a year and a half ago doing this and now we've got the same problem again. Why? Well, the reason is the problem didn't get fixed and sometimes it's not as easy as just a water heater's leaking or there's a plumbing pipe leaking. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So when, when, when people are um, trying to decide if they need to have an assessment done, John, um, are, they, are they seeing mold on the wall? Are they just having difficulties breathing that would propel them to call you? What would be the first clue for someone to pick up the phone and say, I don't know if I have a problem? There, there are several reasons why people call us. Um, and, and I could give you a litany of, of reasons why people call us. Um, it seems like the last few days I've been getting a lot of calls from uh, people that have just occupied a rental uh, apartment, space, home, whatever, and they're having issues. Uh, they're either seeing things, uh, they're seeing, uh, they're opening up uh, cabinets and seeing uh, dark spots in there, or they're seeing something that looks wet looks like it has been wet, they see blisters on the walls, things have been painted over maybe, uh, they see dark spots. Uh, that's one of the things that we see. Another time uh, that we get phone calls is people that have had uh, water damage. Uh, say an air conditioning pipe uh, uh, leaked, uh, the condensate drain leaked, and it leaked all over their ceiling and down the walls and into the carpet and they didn't think it was a bad enough problem. Now two or three weeks later, they're starting to get some odors, they're starting to see some things that, they, that are un, unusual, so they want to find out exactly what's going on and then they'll call us about that. Then other times we just get phone calls from uh, people who have been um, been sick for a while, you know, when, when one member of the family is sick, that's one thing. But when you get uh, mom, dad, uh, and both kids are starting to have the same allergic type reactions, things of that nature, then that's when we get a lot of those calls. Okay, I got <clears throat> it. Thank you. So when you go out, do you perform a free inspection or how does that typically work? You know, um, no, there's there's really nothing free in our business uh, other than a, a good phone call. Um, when we go out uh, to do inspections, we're there to do an inspection and like I stated earlier, we want to put the whole package together. We want to put the package together of what the people have told us, mm -hmm. uh, what we see, what we test, uh, and all of those things and put the whole package together. Obviously that's time consuming, uh, so we have to get paid for that. Now there are people out there that do advertise for, uh, for free mold inspections and to be honest with you, those things are nothing but a trap for the person that calls them in. They're looking for something free and then all of a sudden they're getting sold a bill of goods, something that really uh, they may or may not need. Okay, I got it. Okay, great. So, you know, I've often heard that having your home um, tested or inspected could save you money in the long, long haul before you do a remediation. Is that true? 
uh, absolutely it's true. Um, and that's why the uh, that's why the state of Florida put in that uh, that clause about the same person could not uh, uh, assess and remediate a mold problem at someone's home. Uh, the purpose is is that they're tr the the state decided that it was best to have one person who is really has nothing to do, not nothing to do with, but has no uh, nothing to gain from the remediation. Mm -hmm. So that person is going to be uh, uh, objective and can look at it and give the best advice rather than saying, well, gee, if I tell them that this needs to be cleaned or that needs to be replaced, that's going to take the bill up. I personally have nothing to gain by seeing more or less work done. I want the right amount of work done so that people get not too much and not too little. I got that. If you're just joining us, we're speaking with John Papa George of Alpha Environmental. If you have something that looks suspicious in your home and you'd like to have it investigated, feel free to give him a call. In Hillsboro, you can reach him at 813-514-6653. And in Pinellas, Pasco, it's 727-331. 6653. You can also visit John's website. It's very informative and has a lot of information. And you can find that by visiting www.forensicmold.com. That's forensicmold.com. So, John, I want to ask you how does mold affect the occupants of a home or an office? Um, it really depends on the people. Uh, believe it or not, there's been more research done on what uh, what mold does to our bodies if we eat it, rather than what the rather than the research that's been done for what happens when we breathe that mold. Hmm. Everybody thought that eating bread mold and the likes would be more da more hazardous to our bodies than it than it is. So that's where most of the research has been. Uh, most people that are affected by uh, by breathing mold um, are the ch are children, young children, the younger, uh, the uh, more it bothers them. Uh, and older people, uh, mm -hmm. people over 65 or 70, depending on their health conditions, but also uh, co people with compromised immune systems. And um, I made up a list one time of, of who are uh, people that are that have compromised immune systems, and it's really surprising uh, who has uh, compromised immune systems. You know, typically you would think. Um, it's somebody that just had a heart transplant or had just been in a hospital, things of that nature, but actually it includes diabetics, it includes smokers, believe it or not, people who aren't getting enough sleep. My goodness, that's, well, a, that's, that's all a, that's of us, a, right? <laughs> yeah, that's a big category in itself. Right, right. But the typical symptoms that people see from, uh, uh, from mold uh, typical uh, springtime allergy type stuff, you know, a lot of sneezing and wheezing and coughing and, and things of that nature. But typically, uh, most people can hand a f handle a fair amount uh, of mold more than you would think. Uh, but uh, it's, uh, it's people, some people are just affected by it more than others. I can't tell you why. The doctors can't tell you why. Uh, actually, my job is not to tell you what people are doing or what um, what happens when people breathe it. My job is to determine if there's something in that house or their living conditions that could cause that mold to react. So we are trained to notice the reactions, but we're not trained to tell people how to cure it other than in their homes. I got it. Okay, perfect. Now, are there specific types of symptoms that people are seeing when they are uh, when they might have a mold issue in their home? Um, typically, like I say, the the normal spring allergy type oh, stuff, okay. the the sneezing, the wheezing, the so on and so forth. But um, I had uh, I had a remediator go into a house uh, the other day, and uh, he told me that. Uh, after 15 minutes inside this home, that he got 
uh, he started having a headache, okay. which is another common issue. And this guy's in, in and out of mold all day long. So when he goes in and he gets a headache from, from a moldy house, I know that there's a serious problem. Got it. Okay, great. Are there any other type of inspection services that Alpha Environmental offer? You know, um, we use the word uh, IAQ, indoor air quality. Uh-huh. And that's actually a word that is kind of overused uh, but to be honest with you there's anything that has to do with the air that you're breathing um, we kind of want to we will help you identify those problems uh, sewage backups believe it or not are something that more people um, are affected by and they don't even think about what they're doing uh, something backs up into the bathroom and then it spreads into the carpet uh, and into the drywall. Uh, we do inspect for those. We test for those. Uh, it's a sp specific bacteria that we test for. Mm -hmm. um, other things that we do is we test for uh, other allergens, typical allergens like a dog and cat dander. And most people know what they're, uh, what they're allergic to, but most people don't know that uh, just because you don't have a cat doesn't mean that you don't have cat dander in your home. Cat dander can stay in a home for over seven years. Really? Yeah. Oh and no. <laughs> one of the uh, one of the other things that uh, that we test for um, is uh, dust mites. Uh -huh. um, yes. And dust mites. Well, what is a dust mite? And, well, and tell me more about how they can affect your house. Oh boy. You know what? Dust mites are so ugly. There are so many okay. pictures of them on the internet. I won't even put one on my website because they're just so ugly. Right. But uh, uh, dust mites are one of those ugly, ugly things. Okay. Uh, and to be honest with you. Are they big you, or are they little? No, no, no. Things? They're little tiny things. They're microscopic. You, you can't, can't even see, see them. them. You can't even see them with the uh, with a bare eye. It's actually not the dust mite itself that we're allergic to. It's the remains oh, of, the, okay. the, of the dust mites. All right, um, and that's in your bedding and stuff like in that. In your bedding your and sofa. in your pillow, uh, your and in your sofas. Uh, typically, we tell people replace your pillow every two years uh -huh. because it builds up enough uh, uh, enough of the dust mite allergens. Uh, but there's there's easy ways to get rid of dust mites. You just need to re-educate yourself, uh, your cleaning habits, um, maybe a filter. Uh, things of that nature that that help uh, get people get rid of uh, of dust mites. Dust mites are a very very uh, strong issue that most people don't even know about. Uh, it's it's estimated that uh, over 40 percent of of the population um, has dust mite allergies, uh, and it's in your bed. Uh, they look for uh, they look for. Uh, places with high humidity. Most people sweat a little bit at some point in time while they're sleeping. Uh, what happens? You get up, you get out of bed, and the first thing you do is you pull up your sheets and your cover, and all of a sudden that moisture stays inside your bedding. So you're keeping it moist, and that's what uh, that's what dust mites love is they love the moisture, uh, and they eat off of your uh, your skin cells. Believe it or not. Oh. And they're really, I know, it, yeah. it's, it's, an ugly, <laughs> it's an ugly picture, but I will tell you that one of the reasons why I got into this is I suffered so badly from, from dust mite allergies, and I knew it for years. But it wasn't until about 15 years ago that I started doing the research myself and started understanding what it is and what I had to do. And I'll tell you today... I would I would hope that my my bed is is dust mite free, uh, but I don't suffer from the allergies either that I used to. So it's a good thing. Okay, great. Well, it's good to know that you can eliminate those pesky things, right? You bet. <laughs> That's perfect. You bet. So you know I know that one of your most newest services that you started offering to people was with the Chinese drywall. Share a little bit about what Chinese drywall is and why it can be a problem. Um. Chinese drywall, uh, and it not all just from China. It's it's actually corrosive drywall, but most people know it as Chinese drywall. Uh, in the uh, in 2005 2006, 
when the construction industries were going nuts and trying to keep up with everything, uh, the Chinese decided that they would bring um, drywall to the United States. And they brought it here, and a lot of it had uh, sulfur uh, and something called strontium uh, embedded in the gypsum. And as that came into the U.S. and was installed, uh, a lot of the moisture problems that we have here, uh, the high humidity, it started letting that sulfur off gas from the drywall. Imagine how much drywall you have in an average home and just a little bit of that in, in each board of the drywall. Uh, it really made a mess out of things and what the first things that they started to notice were uh, corrosion on the copper air conditioning coils, corrosion on the uh, uh, copper electrical wiring and uh, outlets and switches. Um, and we kind of stayed away from it for a long time because it looked like something that n there was really no solid testing uh, and, and the costs were just way too prohibitive. But we have recently connected uh, with some laboratories that can give us the proper testing. Uh, we've come up with a proper protocol for, for looking for it in each home. And what we do is we do physical inspections. We go in, we try and look on the back side of the drywall where it says plainly made in China. Um, we look for symptoms like mirrors, uh, like uh, corrosion on plumbing, uh, copper plumbing and uh, electrical wiring. Uh, and also, there's uh, some laboratories that have come out with some good testing uh, that we can send a small piece of drywall to them. And typically, in an average size home, we'll send them two or three uh, pieces of drywall. And they can test it and tell us what the uh, content is. And now we're getting more involved in a lot of the homes that were built with this type of, of drywall from like 2006 through 2007, 8, 9. Uh, a lot of those homes are now being remediated uh, and they're going through and they're ripping out every bit of, uh, of drywall. And then what we do is we go in and we do a, a test to make sure that, and we leave the sampler there for 24 hours and we're testing for about five different sulfur type compounds. We send that off to the lab and then they tell us what's in there and hopefully there's nothing. So. Uh, it's a visual inspection. We like to go back and make sure that there's no dust left from the drywall. They've taken all the switches and outlets and mirrors and all that stuff out of there. Uh, and we kind of inspect the rest of it just to make sure that there's been no damages. So uh, Chinese drywall is, uh, is one of those things that uh, people are going to be hearing more of, unfortunately. Oh, absolutely. You know, do you recommend that folks who are looking to purchase a home get their home assessed prior to that purchase? Or is that I, not necessary? No, I certainly do, particularly if there's a reason. Um, and and um, unless people have a reason, I don't ask them to spend the money to have us come out and do an evaluation uh, just so that we can make money. Um, I think that they need to have a good reason. Uh, one of the good reasons is, is if they have a home inspection and the home inspector comes back and says, you know, I see some place up there in the bedroom closet that, uh, you know, looks like there might have been a roof leak. I'm a little bit concerned about it. You might want to get a mold inspector in there. That's a good reason. Uh, also, people that have had, uh, people that have a family member that has allergies, uh, that's another good reason. And I'll tell you the third reason that uh, I think is probably more important today than ever, the number for closed homes on the market. It has become an absolute epidemic because the, when the foreclosure occurs, the electricity goes off. And if the electricity is not on, guess what? There's no air conditioning. And when there's no air conditioning in a home for a year or two years, all of a sudden all that moisture that's built up in there starts to cause mold. So anybody that's looking at a home that was previously foreclosed, 
I strongly recommend that they do get a mold inspection. Oh, that's awesome advice. Thanks for sharing that great yeah. tip. Now, after, um, so you're assessing the problem, and then there the homeowner can call in a remediator to fix the problem. Then do you go back after the remediator is finished to make sure that the job was done correctly or make sure there's no additional Absolutely. problems? How, is that included in the service? Is that an extra no, service? No, that, that, that is a separate service okay. that we offer at the end. Because truthfully, not everybody needs a, we call it a PRV, a post-remediation verification, but most people call it a clearance. There's a kind of a technical reason why we don't call it a clearance when it comes to mold, but uh, most people call it clearance, and uh, we will go in if there has been a substantial amount of drywall that's been removed, a substantial amount of cleaning, uh, then we, uh, we recommend that. Now, if it's something that the homeowner can handle and it's basically just a cleaning procedure or something simple like that, we don't necessarily need to come in and, and do a post-remediation verification. But, uh, uh, yeah, we do offer that, and that is something that a lot of people are looking for because no matter how much you trust your remediation contractor, um, they all need to be tested so that... Uh, you know, if it's been a substantial amount of work so that everybody knows what happened and can feel comfortable about it. And most insurance companies are paying for it now. If they're paying for any bit of the mold, they are paying for that post-remediation verification. I got it. Okay, thank you. This was awesome information that you shared with us Good. today. Uh, I got a lot out of it, so I'm sure that our audience did as well. Um, I, I want to thank you so much for joining us today and, and for being on our show. Thanks for having me. Yeah, oh, it's been awesome. You know, and again, audience, if you have any questions on something that might look suspicious in your home or you're not sure what it is, people might be getting sick, um, you know, give John a call. He's excellent at what he does. He is John Papageorge with Alpha Environmental. In um, Hillsborough County, you can reach him at 813 514-6653. Pasco Pinellas can call 727-331-6653. And be sure to visit John's website at www.forensicmold.com. My name is Terry Bork, and you've been listening to Go Mind Your Business. We're sponsored by Extreme Marketing Concepts. I want to thank you so much for your time today. And until next time, Go mind your business. Have a great day. Thank you for listening to Go Mind Your Business with Terry Bork, presented by Extreme Marketing Concepts. If you want to drive more traffic, dominate the market, and crush your competition, find out how by visiting our website, www.extrememarketingconcepts.com. And join Terry next time for another episode of Go Mind Your Business.